Welcome to Management Consulted. I'm Jenny Ray, the Managing Director, and today we're bringing you another part in a three-part series, Consulting Firms 101. Our key focus is to really give you an understanding of what happens out there in the consulting industry. We've classified companies into top three firms, big four firms, and tier two firms, and today the focus is on tier two firms. Now, tier two firms are generally all of the rest of the firms that are not big four or top three firms. And the key focus here is that they generally have some kind of expertise or industry focus that they're bringing to the table. Some of the firms are larger and will actually compete with McKinsey, Bain, and BCG. Some firms are smaller and they don't compete, but they work with companies that are either smaller in scope or with people at a different level within the company. But at any rate, we're gonna compare these firms along six different levels in the same way that we looked at the other two classes of firms. Just before we do that, to give you a couple of examples of the types of firms that are in the industry, a few of the big players that do compete head-to-head -head with McKinsey, Bain, and BCG on certain projects are companies like Oliver Wyman, who've had a core focus in financial services, although they're expanding very rapidly in the generalist space. Uh, LEK, which has a core focus on life sciences practices. Accenture, which has a focus on technology, and also AT Kearney, which has a focus on operations and operations strategy. I'm going to use some of these firms as illustrations as we go through the six key factors. So the first factor is branding and prestige with clients. Some clients make decisions usually on one of two factors. The first factor is, do they want somebody who has cross-industry expertise? And the second factor is, do they want somebody who has the deepest level of industry expertise? Sometimes at a top three consulting firm, they can find both of those. Other times, the industry expertise that they're looking for is actually better found at a firm like this. So for example, if LEK was competing with McKinsey's life sciences or healthcare practice, LEK would be comparable in many of the ways in terms of the expertise that they bring to the table. So what that means for you, if you're working as a consultant for one of these firms, is that you really do, uh, especially at this top level, have access to clients at the most senior levels. However, you wanna pay attention to who the clients, and specifically the client maps at the firm are when you're thinking about working for one of the companies, just to ensure that you're going to get the exposure that you're interested in. Second are the salary and the perks of these firms. Interestingly enough, the salary is nearly comparable to McKinsey, Bain, and BCG. The firms, and the, specifically the ones that I talked about, don't usually hire people that quote, can't cut it. They're actually the most competitive candidates. Uh, they're looking for a little bit of a different skill set, a specific focus on their core focus and also an industry key. And because of this, the salary and the perks are really similar to what you'll find at McKinsey, Bain & BCG. Now for other tier two firms, a small boutique 20 person consultancy, of course you might not find the same thing. You might not find comparable salary or comparable perks, but at the end of the day, you'll really probably have something that's super similar. The training of these firms is very rigorous. It's in office as well as offsite. Again, the core focus is not necessarily on the expansive consulting toolkit, but the core focus is really on what makes the firm unique and what kind of expertise they bring to the table. So it's not only the tools and the business focus, but also the industry expertise that they bring. Uh, the fourth part is culture. The firms have tremendous cultures, often very close-knit. In fact, some of the boutique consultancy firms have the most close-knit cultures in the world. They are generally very well respected and you can expect a lot of access to alumni once you leave the firm. However, there's less openness because of the close-knit nature of the teams to your plan to leave the firm. Whereas at McKinsey, Bain and BCG, often you might announce months ahead of leaving. At one of these firms, it's generally a, a slower leaving process that happens for you internally and then you actually announce you're leaving really close to your final departure date. Along with that, it's important to focus on exit opportunities. These firms have exit opportunities, including a focus on going to MBB or big four firms. Oftentimes the access point is through a specific practice. Sometimes, however, you're able to translate into the generalist practice. And moving into another consulting firm can give you initial opportunities to expand your industry base and your client base, and also just an additional data point on your resume. Uh, also, you have a lot of exit opportunities 
opportunities, like I said, with the alumni network and specifically in industry, especially again, the industries that you focused on. And then finally, the interviews for these firms. Interviews are very rigorous. The interviews are very uh, intensely focused on not only the industry focus, but also the generalist focus. However, when the firms are creating strategy cases or operations cases, they're generally going to focus on what they're best at. So while they might throw something into the mix, like a McDonald's case for an LEK, uh, you'll still see the core of their focus being what they're great at. So as you're preparing, you can really make sure that you keep in mind both the general business toolkit that they're looking for as well as the industry specifications. So we hope that you've enjoyed the series on the firm profiles. We have additional firm profiles on our website and also additional content at managementconsulting.com.